Um, so welcome everybody. Um, first time we've done one of these, uh, just to sort of give everybody a preview. And also the concept was uh, also to for any um, board members who or EOs who are not sure if they can squeeze things into their budget, we thought it'd be a great idea to talk about the value for, especially for board members who might need to be the champions to go back to their board to um, sort of figure out how to carve money out of the budget to make it possible to come to the PDF. So um, I'm wondering how many um, how many EOs do have a member either with them in the office or planning on logging in. From what we could tell from from the registration list, uh, we didn't have any uh, volunteer members, board members joining us on the call, but is there anybody who does have a, a with them? I'll take that as a no slash can't figure out how to unmute yourself as you try to say yes. Um, can you, Catherine, can you scroll up a little? Hi, Ruth, I think. Couldn't quite hear you, but it sounded like you were trying to chime in. Okay, we're not hearing anything, um, but if any of you want to say, yep, we have a member with us or whatever, then just uh, you can also use the uh, the chat function and, and send a message into it. Um, so I also wanted to uh, take this opportunity to introduce uh, Catherine Segal, who uh, many of you from Ontario or everyone from Ontario joining us will know, unless you're a, a very new EO, Catherine was, was with the OHBA for uh, many years, her most recent stint was for a, a year replacing Valerie at OHBA while Valerie was on maternity leave and at the end of that time Catherine had to find another place to work and we were the lucky recipients of a call and she said hey I want to stay within the DHBA family um, so uh, it's been great having Catherine join us um, hopefully you, again you would know with Natasha unless we do it's probably some, some new people as well so uh, Natasha Rombo is our director of marketing and communications and has been a staff lead for us on EOC for the past couple of years. But um, we're with Catherine joining us, we're kind of doing a transition. Both will be involved uh, with EOC moving forward, but Catherine will take more and more of a, of a lead on the day-to-day -day, uh, activities for EOC. So uh, great that we're able to build our team and provide more value to EOC moving forward with more, more people on it. Um, so with that, uh, I will pass it over to Natasha and Catherine. I think Natasha is going to start on the walkthrough of the uh, of, of the EOC and Charlottetown, but particularly sort of the value proposition we think we have for EOs on attending the PDF. Yeah, so for those of you who have been before, hopefully you're really familiar with what the goal of the PDF is, um, but there may be some of you on the call today that uh, it's your first year as an EO and you're not sure what the event is or you've just never been before and wonder if it's uh, if it's right for you. So the answer is yes, it's definitely right for you. Um, you know, all EOs hopefully will prioritize it in their, in their budgets with their boards to be able to attend. It's an event specifically for EOs and HBA staff. Um, it's the only event of the year nationally that we've got just for EOs and staff. And the, the, it's kind of a twofold. Uh, goal to it. The first is to provide anybody that's attending with new techniques and skills, um, everything that they need to know to, you know, to enhance their HBA back home, to help do their jobs easier, more efficiently, um, just get kind of up-to-date information on what's going out there in the association world. And then the other core component to it is building relationships with other EOs. Um, you know, sometimes people feel like they work in a little bit of a silo, especially if you're with a smaller HBA and you don't have, um, you know, a big staff around you. Um, but the, the goal of the EOC PDF is to bring everybody together so that you can meet people face to face, develop those relationships so that if you have questions or you're coming up with something new or you need some support, that you feel comfortable calling other uh, associates across the country um, and asking questions, um, even just venting a little bit. Um, really just building that support system for you. So 
So that's the point of the PDF is that combo of the new skills and techniques and, and developing yourself professionally and your position as executive officer, and then also building those crucial relationships as well while you're there. So the event is for everybody. Um, EOs are definitely uh, encouraged to attend. HVA staff are also welcome as well. So whether you want to bring staff with you um, or if you can't go and you'd still like to send a staff member, they are more than welcome to come as well. Um, and the programming itself is designed for all EOs. So it doesn't matter if you're a small association, you've got 50 or fewer members, or if you're a large one with close to 1,000. Um, the lessons learned in the core programming, um, like the in-class sessions, that kind of thing, it's, we understand that there's a variety of HBA sizes and EOs that will be there. Um, and the programming is designed for everybody. It's also designed whether you're a local EO or a provincial. Um, again, a lot of uh, similarities between the two, and there's time in all of the sessions for people to talk about their individual experiences. So small locals can talk about this, you know, some of the challenges that small locals face. Um, a larger association or a provincial, they have time to, to discuss as well. And it's also for newer or experienced EOs. Um, obviously, if you're, if you're brand new to being an EO to the association in your first couple years, this will be an extremely valuable experience for you. Um, you get to learn about the association as a whole, meet all your colleagues. Um, but those of you who have been around you know, a few years as well, not only do you bring that experience to the table and help augment the learning that everybody has at the session, um, but the speakers that we bring in are designed to help you, um, you know, increase your skill level, learn new things. And again, you're building those connections with newer people that are there as well. So it really is for, for pretty much um, everybody. And yeah, as I mentioned before, the relationship building is very much key. Um, and that's not just you know, a personal level, you're bringing that back to your HBA with you. It's helping you be more effective uh, in your job as an EO or as a staff member at, a, at an association. So um, you know, we do have meetings throughout the year that some of you are able to attend, but there's no real dedicated space just for EOs like there is in this intensive two and a half day programming. Um, and that's really where you get the value of meeting people and, and getting to know them and getting comfortable with them enough to, to take up the phone and ask them questions. So with that, I think we'll get into the details of the, uh, the PDF itself this year, which is going to be held in Charlottetown PEI. And I'll give it back over to Catherine to walk you guys through um, the details that we've got today. All right. Well, um, we're really excited to host this year's uh, PDF in Charlottetown PEI, uh, known as the birthplace of Confederation. So there's a nice little historical piece there for you. Um, this year's forum is really based on findings that the HBA cultivated from a survey that went out to the EOC in 2019 um, that really asked for some more opportunities to work on communication, marketing, and value for uh, local associations. So that's really one of the main focuses of this year's PBS. It's also going to be focusing on, as Natasha mentioned, um, how we can support each other and work with one another, and how to use each other to build, build on our local association initiatives. Um, in the past, EOs have mentioned and continue to say that this is a great opportunity to not only get it together and share ideas of what they've been doing locally in their, in their own um, HBAs, but it also gives a great um, chance for people to look, to meet each other who haven't ever been to one of these events or who are relatively new and start to build those relationships. So I'm going to just quickly take everybody through the agenda. We've got uh, two and a half really jam-packed days filled for you guys. Um, there's going to be fun, interactive, but also full of key learning opportunities and uh, workshops. So I'll start with day one, which is really more of our reception. It's going to be done in an East Coast style kitchen party. So if you're from the East Coast, you know that this is kind of one of their big uh, party ideas that they have going on. We won't be in the kitchen. We will be in the fair home and in the grand room. Uh, and it's really going to be a great opportunity for EOs to get together meet each other for the first time, rebuild the connections that they've had over the years. Uh, we'll do this through a series of 
icebreaker games. Um, there will be some local food, some local beverages. Uh, and it will just be a fun and interactive way to get together and get to know each other. Um, the next day, Wednesday, we'll start with breakfast, which is included. Uh, and then we will get into our first set of sessions, which we have with Denise Ryan, who's with us for the full for the full day, and she's really going to focus her sessions on communication and engaging members in different ways to do this, in different ways to market members. So the first two sessions are really going to be focusing on lessons learned, best practices, and uh, techniques for communicating and engaging with members in uh, association type environment. I guess I'd just add to that um, both Denise and the speaker you're about to um, talk about. Uh, we're both speakers last year in Baltimore, so uh, we did a post-mortem after our, our Baltimore session about who were the best speakers, and, and these were the two that were recommended by the attendees for what we wanted to look at this year. They got really good reviews last year, so we're excited to have them join us and, and focus on our, our Canadian stuff but in Charlottetown. They are both full of life, and um, I enjoy chatting with them when I have the opportunity. So, and they're very excited to come and work with you guys. And they are catering both of their both days are being catered specifically to HBAs and Canadian HBAs specifically. Um, going from there, we're actually going to have lunch at a place called Sanders Food Hall, which is. Uh, local food, crafts, and artisans uh, indoor market. So we will be doing a catered lunch together, but we want to make sure to give everybody an opportunity to kind of wander around as well and check out some of the local offerings. From there, we'll be heading back to the fair home for our final session with Denise, which will be more focused as a workshop, and we'll work with each of you uh, together to build out uh, communication and marketing techniques for your individual HBA. After that, we will be taking things a little bit offside, changing it up a little bit, and we'll be going to the PEI Brewery, where we will continue with our networking initiative and also give you guys an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the 2021 incoming president, Larry Clay. This includes also a light snack, a tour of the facility, and a tasting of some of the local brews. Continuing on the theme of networking, we're going to head to, left, to dinner at the Fishbone, Fishbone's Oyster Bar and Seafood Grill uh, for some local cuisine. And from there, we're going to do an evening on the town with, at the Old Dublin Pub, which will feature some foot stomping, East Coast style live bands. The next day we'll start again at around 7.45 with breakfast, and this is when we meet our new speaker, which is Amanda. Amanda is continuing on with the idea of communication, but, they, but focusing more on value proposition. So the first session will really focus on what a proper value proposition is, go through case studies, uh, and our second session will really be more focused on putting these value propositions in action, and she's going to work with the local associations and the EOs to build a value proposition framework that you can take home and institute in your own local HBA or provincial HBA. Uh, from there, we'll go to lunch at a local place called Playmakers and Nichols Gastro House, which when we do open the PDF site later this afternoon, I recommend you click on the link and check them out. They actually have a pretty interesting history uh, based on their first circuit that was ever in town in PEI in Charlottetown. And uh, they kind of have a fun theme going on. Uh, so check it out. It's fun, but the food is going to be fantastic there. When we get back from lunch, we're actually going to put these value proposition frameworks into action. And we're going to focus on PEI since we're there. Uh, and we're going to work together to build out a value proposition for PEI uh, using the communication skills and the marketing skills that we've learned over the last two days. Yeah, well, I'll just jump in on that uh, a little bit. Uh, we wanted to figure out a way to pull this all together. And uh, in, in talking with Alan, who's on the call with us today, there's Alan facing some, some challenges. He's got a booming economy in, in PEI, but membership isn't tracking along well with the booming economy. So um, I'm going to work a little bit with Alan, and uh, we'll figure out the best way to approach this. But we thought what better way to 
sort of take some of our learnings and do apply them. This will involve also pulling together, I mean, we'll have learned some stuff from our speakers, but of course one of the best values of the PDF and you'll see at large is hearing from all of the members. So we'll have been getting all kinds of good insights from the members over the over the two days, but this will be a chance for everybody to share ideas, not only about what could be done in PEI, but you know what's working and not working in in our own locals all, all across the country. So we thought good opportunity for a case study. And uh, and Alan, you and I can work a little bit on, on how we best put forward um, the PEI situation and, and some of the, the challenges you're facing. Does that sound good, Alan? I guess we'll take those. Oh, yes, absolutely. Alan's thrilled. He's uh, <laughs> trying to find his, his uh, unmute button, but he's, he's really excited about this. <laughs> so we'll, we'll continue to work on that, but that's kind of the game plan to uh, wrap things up. Um, continuing on the team building thing, we've actually planned a very fun scavenger hunt around historic downtown Charlottetown. Um, this is going to be an opportunity for EOS and HBA staff to work together. And what we basically have planned is we set up a bunch of statues, historic buildings, and everything that we're hoping that you You'll go to take a fun or unique and creative selfie in front of, um, and you will be competing for a chance to win a prize. The prize will be unveiled later on, but for now, just keep that in mind. There are a few rules because a scavenger hunt in a race is not fair if you have all the time in the world. So you will need to be back at the fair home in by 4.30 for a reception in order to qualify for the prize. So at the fair home, we will continue on with our event and do our closing reception and father's auction, which is a great opportunity to raise money for a local charity, uh, which we'll, we will be unveiling later on as well. Uh, so we'll be there for about an hour and a half, and this will be another opportunity to network, hang out, get to know one another. We will do the signs auction, and we will announce the winner of the scavenger hunt. From there, we'll go off to dinner at the famous Peak Key restaurant and bar, which is right on the harbor, offers fantastic views of the sunset, uh, and we'll get to have some local cuisines and beverages and send, off, send each other off in style. There will also be a live band there, so we'll get to continue on with the idea of listening to uh, East Coast style music. So that basically is the plan for the two and a half days. I did want to introduce you to our two speakers. So Denise Bryan, both of them come from the States. Denise is um, a fantastic speaker who has uh, her certified speaker professional designation. She has been at a numerous events. As Kevin mentioned, she was speaking in Baltimore last year. Um, her focus of this year, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be more on effective marketing and moving profit forward, having an intentional engaging strategy for meeting your members, engaging with new members, and bringing in volunteers to your association. She'll go over some of the barriers and speak to you guys a little bit more about what the barriers to your communications are and how you can get around that. Uh, and she'll help give you guys some tools on how to best communicate moving forward. Amanda, also a fantastic speaker, and all this information is available online. So um, she's a fantastic speaker, and her focus is really going to be on building effective value proposition frameworks for associations. Again, she's going to very much cater this to our HBA system, and uh, her and I have been in communication about some of um, the locals that we have in place, and I know that she's going to want to ask you guys a little bit more questions as you guys get as we get closer to. Um, she is also going to be very much an interactive speaker, so she's really going to phrase that she's going to keep this very much hands on the entire time. She's got two sessions planned. One, again, like I mentioned, is just going to be talking about best practices. And then she's actually going to go step through step by step with you guys in building frameworks that you can initialize in your own provincial or local association. 
I know so add for any of these who haven't been at the PDF in the past couple of years. Um, in case you're wondering, well, what are the parallels between the U.S. and Canada? Um, they're shockingly almost identical in terms of the challenges that HBA face uh, at the local and provincial versus local and state level. It's identical challenges. They're set up exactly the way, the same way we are in Canada. And they have large locals and small locals. And you know, when if you attended the PDF in Baltimore, you know, we all see the the parallels. And we also had a speaker in Saskatoon two years ago who was also, you know, a, a good speaker that we had seen uh, in Denver the year before that, and she came up to uh, Saskatoon and did a wonderful job. She was fabulous. Um, so if you're worried about uh, Americans coming in and not being in a similar situation, it really is, and we've had very good experience with it to date. So, I mean, I talked about this a little bit earlier with the agenda, but just to reiterate, we've got some really fantastic networking and team building activities, which is one of the core values that you get through the PDS. And Kevin also mentioned that one of the best uh, resources to each EO is the ability to network and call on each other when you're going through um, maybe local challenges or HPA challenges. And this is just a great way for you guys to build those relationships so you know who to call, so you know what's going on in each other's locals. And so you have that ability to learn from one another. So again, we'll start with the reception. All of these are built to be opportunities for you to get to know each other in intimate, close settings. Uh, we'll start at the fair home, which I think you guys will be very impressed with, I mean, with the amount of people that we expect to be attending, and I'll get into this in a second, we're basically going to be taking over that entire historic in property. So I like to think of it as the HBA camp in that we get full reign and free run of the, of the space while we're there. There is a big outdoor component with a fire pit, which we have used of, and patio space and lush gardens, and uh, you guys are really going to enjoy it which takes me to the Fair Home Inn, which is one of Charlottetown's famous historic hotels. Uh, they're called the Fair Home Boutique Inn, and they're made up of five different houses, all within a minute to 30 seconds walk from one another. So the two inns that we have reserved strictly for our EOs and HVA staff are the Hillhurst Inn, and the Cranford Inn. Sorry, I had to remember the name of the other one. So they are right across from each other, and they are a 20 to 30 second walk to the Fair Home, Prop Fair Home Inn, which is where the majority of our sessions will be being held. Uh, the Hillhurst is actually where breakfast will be served as well. So you guys will have free reign of the kitchen. It's going to be a hot breakfast. Every room in this entire facility is unique. Uh, no two rooms are the same, so that is something that I want everybody to take, keep in mind when they are calling to book their spaces because uh, some are queen size rooms, some of them are king size rooms, some of them are double bedrooms, some of them are full apartment suites. So I know that some EOs like to share space, so keep that in mind when you are booking your space there. Uh, I recommend calling early if you do plan on a specific room so that you can reserve that space. We do have a flat rate that will include Wi-Fi, parking if you are driving from the airport or anything, or if you're driving from Halifax, fast, which I know a few people have indicated they might want to do, um, as well as breakfast is included. And again, I mentioned it's a hot breakfast, and you will have water bottles and TVs and everything in your room, although we would rather you not spend all your time in your room and spend your time together. And we will have the common area in the main building, the fair home which is a great area for everyone to congregate and hang out, and we will have snacks available and coffee and tea there. So uh, the flat rate is $209, and that is for the entire time that you are there. there are, you can extend that beyond or uh, before, beyond your stay, if you were planning to stay in Charlottetown for longer. Everything is very close to each other, so at the most, we are uh, 10 a 15 minute drive from the airport. At most, it's 11 minutes to the harbor, uh, eight minutes to Victoria Row, which is a very nice historic and pedestrian only area. 
So nothing is with it more than 15 minutes, and I would arguably say it's more like seven minutes from each other. So I just wanted to pass that on. I mean, we will be doing walking, nothing uphill really. It's just there will be walking because it's a beautiful city and we want to make sure that we get the most of the time that we're there together. So I'm going to throw it back to Natasha right now so she can go over a little bit more about um, the general cost and what else we have in store. Sure. Um, so we are going to make all of this live on the site. Um, sorry, I think maybe there was a question. Do we have a question before we get into that? No question. Just feedback. That's cool. All right, so we are going to have all of this content live on the website uh, by this afternoon. We didn't want to spoil it and have it up there in advance, so you'll be able to go back and reference all of this um, if you go to chba.ca slash PDF. Pretty easy. You can jump on there and see all this info, including a link to registration. Um, so the registration cost for this year is going to include all of your meals um, and all of the event programming. It's $500, which is consistent with uh, what we've had in the past. Last year, obviously, was a little bit different because we went down to Baltimore, but given the dollar, it was still roughly uh, around the same amount. Um, so you'll be able to go on there and link. It's, it's, we used to have it as a PDF for those of you that may have done it a, a while back, like an actual PDF that you fill in, but now it's, it's just all done online, so you can pay right away with your credit card um, and register yourself. So that will be all up this afternoon. Um, and, you know, we do get questions time to time of whether or not there's any uh, financial assistance for those uh, local or provincial associations that, um, you know, are, are really struggling uh, with the budget and would not otherwise be able to send their executive officer. Um, so last year we initiated uh, a bursary in place. The UFC Management Committee worked hard to bring that uh, to those that really need it. Um, there is, a, you know, there is some accountability with that. You've got a form to fill in. You'll need to get your board uh, president or treasurer to, to kind of sign off. And there's a few questions on there, just, um, you know, asking about um, the value that that uh, that you that the local association or provincial association sees in it, and hopefully will plan for future years to incorporate that into the budget. Um, and then you have to provide your print financial statements for the previous year as well. Um, and the management committee will kind of vet those bursaries if we have uh, quite a few of them. Last year I think we had just a handful and we were able to um, to accommodate everybody that had applied for it. The bursary, um, if you need it, and again it's very much for those who need and would not otherwise be able to attend, covers the registration cost and the hotel cost. When possible, uh, we ask EOs if they're open to share, so they can share accommodations, which could allow us to um, to accommodate more people uh, to come on the bursary. But it so it covers your registration costs, your hotel costs. It doesn't cover your flight. Um, we have had EOs say that in the past they've actually had board members that donate their frequent flyer points or whatever to help them out with the cost of the flight. Um, but because that varies so much across the country, that that one would be on you still. Um, so that information, if you need it, will be up as well. Um, and otherwise, that's it for registration. It's pretty straightforward. Just go and register yourself. Hope to see you there. And I guess I'll just end this presentation by saying that uh, we will make this uh, slideshow available. And you can contact Natasha, myself, or Kadisha at any time if you need it. If you have any questions or are looking for more information, we'll be sure to help you with that. So I'm going to end the slideshow. And I will bring back up our agenda. So we have asked some of our members from the EOC MC to speak a little bit about why they often attend these events and um, give us their thoughts on why it's important for you guys to attend. And do we have Stephanie on the call? I'm sure Neil is. Okay. And so I'm going to turn it over to Neil. Neil, if you could turn your microphone back on and just give us your thoughts, and then we'll welcome Suzanne Mammel onto the call. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm back on. Well, uh, there's not a whole lot more than I can add. I think uh, the three of you have covered it very well. So you asked me to provide a few points on the benefits of the PDF. I mean, I'm just going to reiterate uh, what's been touched on. 
it's a tremendous learning opportunity, especially for those that are new or fairly new. Uh, when I first came in, it took me about two or three hours to figure out what a PDF was. The people that were sitting beside me were also new, and we thought it was an Adobe conference. So, I mean, there's so much more to learn. Uh, it's great being in an environment where you, you can speak in an industry-specific environment because we all share you know, very similar technical issues, other issues that are specific to our industry, and just be able to bounce some ideas off people as you're in these seminars or even when you're out doing the, uh, the activities that are arranged too is a great way to really bond with others and just dig a bit deeper into some of the issues or questions that you might have as an EO. I mean, even if you've been there a number of years, there are obviously always still questions to uh, to learn from, or oh, sorry, to ask. It's a great way to you know, create synergy with other EOs. Uh, we're all basically on Team CHBA. Uh, we're all move, trying to move in the same direction. So it, it's just a really great opportunity to be surrounded by others that are kind of moving in the same direction. Uh, you know, it's also a great opportunity for an EO really to benchmark how you're doing against some others. If you've got an awards program or if you've got seminars, golf tournaments, you know, just to be able to reach out and, and ask others, how do you do this? How do you do some of the things that you're doing? Uh, we can't always do that as EOs because it's very difficult sometimes for our members don't really fully appreciate what's involved in setting some of these things up. So it's a great opportunity to be able to turn to your other fellow EOs and just have conversations in this environment when everyone's together. And I think out of these, you know, there's always going to be ideas that are spawned from getting together and meeting with others, whether it's what to do on membership. I remember a PDF that we held in Newfoundland and it was on membership management strategies and the fellow Doug who, who was I believe from Harvard dug really deep into member engagement strategies that you can keep this and always look back on it and and get some uh, some different viewpoints on it and again just and then you know at the end of it you also can develop some friendships with other EOs I mean and it's a great opportunity knowing who you can call on Natasha's mentioned earlier who do you call well, you can always pick up the phone and, and call another EO from across the country. And I know I do that on a regular basis, whether it's text messages or email. If I've got a question or how to deal with a specific subject, I know that I can call on other EOs and I've met them and we've also talked about it. So it puts you in an environment where you can really open up and, and dig deeper as an EO into association and knowing that you've got that support. That's, that's great, Neil. Thank you so much. Well, I have. And I will just add for any, I, I didn't hear if there are any presidents or board members. This should be an, an item where you do fit into your budget. I know it's tougher for the smaller ones, but any association, if you're a member of T or others, you know, the emphasis is on learning and continuing the development. And it should be something that you should try and get into your budget every year because it is probably one of the most important ones that you can be involved with. Um, and if you can plan early for it, um, I, I think it's you, you reap the rewards at the end of it. Thank you. Yeah, Neil, and I would just add to that, as we said every other year, you know, great points by you. And, and if you are as an executive officer, if you know you're having trouble uh, being able to uh, show the value to your board and get that support, we our incoming president attends the uh, professional development forum every year. So, as you saw, Larry Clay will be joining us this year. Stephanie was there last year, and we always offered, uh, and we have in fact at times sent uh, letters from from the president to really encourage boards to provide that support. And in a few instances, that's really helped. Uh, unlock the dollars in a budget to help get the uh, EO, the necessary funds from the local budget to get to the, the PDF because it's just such a great, I mean really I think the way to word it, it's an investment in your own association, right? The stronger your EO is and, and your EO having connections all across the country on whatever the challenges might be are a heck of a lot better than trying to figure it out individually. So 
Again, that offer is there if anybody you know would like some support from a president as a member Hello? who's been. Hello. Yes. Oh, hi. I'm good. How are you? Oh. Hi. Oh, awesome. Perfect. Um, I do. Um, I'm actually in North York um, today working. Am I able to pick that up um, tomorrow or the following day? Okay, perfect. Oh my gosh, I'll be there this week for sure. Thanks so much. Thanks. Okay. So we've muted everybody for the moment. Oh, it sounded like that person was about to be getting off the call. I think our next person was uh, Suzanne, who is going to say a few words. And I think you can unmute just Suzanne if you click her. Uh, there we go. Oh, Suzanne needs to enter her PIN to get unmuted. Okay. We're trying to unmute everybody. There we go. Everybody's unmuted. That call is done by whoever took that call. Glad you could make it. <laughs> and uh, Suzanne, if you're able to chime in, now would be the time. She's on the call. She's just um, I'm going to open up the chat window to see if she's text chatting with us. Say I'm, I'm trying to get in. All right, well, while well, Suzanne figures out whether or not she'll be able to get the audio working, does anybody have any questions? Okay. Kevin, uh, Neil here. I'll jump in for maybe the benefit of others. Uh, you may have said it. Where do we find the budget for the EOC for EOs that might be planning this, how, how they can kind of determine what the cost? Is it already posted on? The CHB website. So, as, as Natasha was saying, we'll be, we'll be posting all of this information today. Um, so later this afternoon, this will go up on the on the CHBA website, CHBA slash PDF. Yep. Um, so it'll be there, and the cost for registration as well as the cost for the hotel will be will be listed there. And then, as the, as was mentioned, uh, it's up to the uh, travel is whatever it is, of course, for people. So that'll be all there this afternoon. That didn't want to scoop our webinar. Great, thanks. Okay. Well, I guess we are not going to be having success with Suzanne joining us. So we'll just throw it out one more time if anybody has any questions or comments. Or if anybody else wants to, uh, as, as a past attendee, throw out the benefits of, of attending uh, the session, that would be great. It doesn't look like Suzanne's going to have audio success. Oh, we've got a hand raised. And then just raising your hand with a question. <laughs> All right. Well, apologies for the uh, the tech challenges. I, I think that's the end of our agenda. I don't that is the end of our agenda. Um, again, I guess if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Natasha, myself, or Kadisha at any time, and we'll be happy to answer anything you've got. It doesn't have to work this. No, it's just, yeah, that won't help the audio anyway. Okay, well, well thanks a lot, everybody. Well, also, uh, if anybody couldn't make it and contact you with questions, we are, we did record this, and that's going to be posted on the EOC portal as well. So if anybody wants to be able to, uh, to view this that wasn't able to, or if you found it so riveting you want to watch it again, um, then we'll have it posted and, and ready for you. So thanks a lot, and we look forward to seeing uh, hopefully all of you who are on this uh, call in, in PEI in a couple of months, and hopefully many of you uh, in BAMP in, uh, in just a few weeks now. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.